Hi everybody, welcome back to Dishing with Dush. I am super excited for today's episode because I'll be sharing with you another recipe from my childhood and you should be super excited as well because I've seen many of you requesting multiple times on my previous videos asking for a biryani recipe or a buryani recipe as we call it here in Sri Lanka. Now I'm going to be sharing my grandma's recipe and trust me, she throws everything at this except the kitchen sink. Maybe that too. <laughs> but since there is a ton of ingredients and a ton of steps, what I've tried to do in this recipe that I'm sharing with you is to simplify it and streamline it a little bit so that even the casual cook at home can follow along and experience this amazing biryani. Also, if you live in Sri Lanka, I found a little trick and a little product that I found in the market here that's going to make life even easier. So let's get started. So when you're making a good biryani, it is all about the quality of your ingredients and the amount of spices that you use. So you want to use the best quality basmati for this. You want to use, you know, ghee instead of oil. Like you want to go the whole hog. And one thing I realized is when I was trying to make this recipe is that spice prices in Sri Lanka are just insanely through the roof at this point. Uh, for example, just a packet of cardamom, the smallest that you could find is about 800 rupees. And you need a whole ton of spices to make this work. And that was just one spice. So what I found and that I was really impressed was this norm mix and this is just 80 rupees and this has everything that you would normally use and it's just basically a spice blend and for 80 rupees that's just one tenth the price of just the cardamom and you need mace and black cardamom and all these different spices that you would probably never use unless you are making biryani all the time and over time you know your spices are going to lose their you know their, their flavor and potency and you're just gonna end up having to throw them away. So don't waste your money. I think this is really the best cost-effective solution if you're making a biryani. You don't need to store it, you don't need to do anything, and you know, all your spices stay fresh. So that's what I'll be using. And this is gonna be a great building block to make my grandmother's recipe. Cause this is just basically all my spices, but we're gonna add a whole ton of stuff apart from this. And the thing is, if you find my recipe too complicated, you know, I read the instructions on the back of this packet and really you could have a restaurant called the biryani just following the three simple steps that they've given and not fuss as much. But if you want to go all the way, my advice to you is to prep a lot of these elements beforehand and I will talk you through it as we go. And that's the thing, and for the longest time I could figure out what kind of biryani this was because it didn't really fit into any mold. The closest I think it's like a Kerala style biryani, but there's a whole lot more going on here. So we have chicken and we've added our spices, the biryani mix that we I just showed you. And to this, we're gonna add a few more things. Let's start with our garlic. And as usual, I have my handy press. And let's do about a bulb. So that's a good, I would say six to eight cloves. Get some nice fresh ginger root. I'm just gonna grate that in. You could also grind this if you want to, but um, my zester tends to get it means really fine, so no problem there. So next to this, we are going to add some curd. Good. Generous amount. Some ghee. And add some ghee into this as well. <laughs> also remember that basically that biryani mix from now that I use was virtually a spice mix. There's no salt in it, so you have to add salt. And also I, I, I saw that some of you had some concerns about me using MSG in my previous video in the fried rice, which I don't quite agree with, but if that is a concern for you, guess what, there's no MSG in this, so you know, you're all clear, you're good to go. <laughs> so we go in with the salt, and a little bit of heat, good old fashioned chili powder, and we'll give this a mix. And we're gonna go in with a ton of fried onion. 
So this is one of those elements that you want to prep beforehand because if you're going to be frying onions, trying to do everything in one go for this recipe, you're going to be exhausted. You're probably not going to even enjoy your biryani at the end of it because it is a lot of work and uh, have it all ready to go so that the actual biryani making part is enjoyable and fun. So we're going to mix this all up and let it marinate for about an hour. Also into this we're going to add some tomatoes which is going to make the base of the, the gravy for this. So we're talking about strong robust flavors and I mean just give this a rough chop. This is all going to cook down. It doesn't need to look pretty. And in it goes. So unfortunately I don't have a bowl that's big enough to do the next step. Ideally you would mix in your cubed potatoes along with your chicken. So I'm going to marinate this separately and we're going to combine it in the pot. So pretty much the same steps. We're going to treat it like a meat if you're adding potatoes. And I know it's a bit strange to see potato in biryani but I don't know this is something we did in our household and that we've grown up with. I don't see this uh, you know, so much outside but I just love what potato does to biryani. So same steps, we have a... So, you see this part, right? So you could literally just do this if you're vegetarian, forget the meat. You could just do potato and add any other vegetables that you want, but honestly, even just put it on its own would work. And you could have a vegetarian biryani. And actually, I don't think um, the spoon is working very well for getting all of this amazing marinade onto everything. So I'm just gonna go in with my hands. Just make sure your hands are clean. And yeah, that's working a lot better. So make sure it's rubbed up thoroughly and evenly. And after this, all we're going to do is let this marinate for about an hour. You can just leave it out or in the fridge. It doesn't matter, we're going to cook it up very soon. So, now that our chicken and potatoes have marinated for about an hour, let's cook these bad boys up. So we're going to need a little bit of oil in the pan. And of course, no biryani is complete without using ghee. So. A generous amount of ghee. And we're gonna add, uh, yep, chicken. And, our potatoes at the same time. Load the heat a little bit to a medium. Do a good mix. And guess what? That's not just it. We're gonna add some coriander, fresh coriander, roughly chopped just like that and some mint and some lemon And now we're gonna add a little bit of water as liquid. So that this cooks through. And we're gonna cook this until our potatoes are done. So we're gonna reduce the heat here in just a little bit and let it simmer for 30 to 40 minutes. We'll check up on it sporadically. And when your potatoes are good to go, this part is done. 
oh, it's like a kaleidoscope of color in here. It's beautiful. You get the reds, the greens, the yellows. You can see the chicken cooking and the deep browns. Ah, oh, so excited. We just close this up. And yeah. And we just let it do its thing. So I've already started cooking the chicken like you saw and we're moving on to our rice. Just use a rice cooker, make your life easier. I've already got some, like I said, really good quality basmati, no compromising here. Uh, find the best that's out on the market. Uh, washed and with the water and ready to go. But it's not just gonna cook on its own, we're gonna add a few more spices here. And I love, love, love to have star anise. Adds a beautiful licorice undertone to this. And of course, come on, this is Sri Lanka, we need cinnamon, right? So I'd say about two sticks. And well, for good measure, I think another packet should do it. And of course, salt. And as always with this recipe, a little more ghee. Now if you can't find ghee, maybe butter would be an okay substitute. Uh, but it does make a bit of a difference, so if you can, go with ghee. And we're gonna give this a nice mix through before we turn on our rice cooker. And all we have left to do is turn it on. And we wait again. So guys, our rice is done. Oh man, all you need to do is, now switch this off. And there's this cool trick my grandmother used to do. And that was put some egg yellow coloring on top. And I'll show you what this does. Now, just drizzle it. And let it sit until there's no more steam and the rice is somewhat cooled. Don't mix it in and you'll see why. And now also we're gonna check on our chicken and we do this, like I said, by testing the potato. So you just run your knife through it, and if it goes through with just enough firmness, but without too much resistance, and the texture feels even through, it's done. We're just gonna top this off with some beautifully thick coconut milk. I'm gonna give it a mix through. Whoo <laughs> this makes me very happy. If you could smell this, it's unbelievable. Right, now we, went, we let both of them cool down just, just a little bit. So guys, all we have left to do is just mix these two elements up. And like I said, I've tried to make this as easy as possible for you, because usually how my grandmother used to make this would be to parboil the rice and then layer it like a traditional dum biryani and seal it with dough, they're not gonna do any of that. And it doesn't matter too much because it's still gonna be amazingly delicious. So get the stove going. Yep, you guessed it. <laughs> Ghee. And some oil. Just wait till our ghee melts. We wanna get it super heated. We're gonna add our raisins. Now I know some people don't like sweet things mixed in with their savory dishes. So if you're one of those people, you can completely omit this. But I think it just works really well with this dish. I say leave it in and give it a chance. <laughs> Even if you're apprehensive. And I've kind of pre-roasted my nuts just a little bit. I'm gonna put most of it in, saving some for our garnish later on. and also those beautifully fried onions. And remember to keep salting our elements through. And we start spooning in our meat.
Oh, it almost smells too delicious to bear. I'm gonna turn off the heat just for a bit. And now. Look at that. And what will happen as you mix the rice through is you'll have little flecks of this bright orange that peek through everything. And if you have extra gravy left over like I do, you can save it and have it with another meal. And now we're gonna add just a dollop of curd to tie it all together. It's gonna be extremely moist and succulent and it's downright delicious. <laughs> so we're not done just yet. So garnishing is a very critical step in this biryani. So let's see what we're gonna do with that. For our garnish, we're gonna use, again, some mint leaves. Actually, along with the, can take off the stems in this case. And give it a good chop. We also need coriander. Also, we have some boiled deep fried eggs. And we're gonna halve. this thing up. What we're gonna do is get more raisins, some more cashew, and remember our mix of greens. more cashews and our beautiful eggs and then last of all favorite part a fried deliciously caramelized onion and finally <laughs> this is ready to eat. So there you have it folks. So that's my grandmother's family biryani recipe. And look, if you really found all those steps too daunting, remember you could just simply follow the instructions on the non biryani packet and you would still have a restaurant quality biryani for sure. The spice mix was amazing. I was very impressed. But I do recommend going the extra mile to make this because Trust me, this is like no other biryani you probably tried. So having said that, I'm gonna dig in. Wow. <laughs> that brings back a lot of memories. I have, it's after so many years that I'm trying, it's amazing. I've missed it so much. And you can't imagine <laughs> why I haven't made it because there's so many steps but I really should make this more often and so should you give it a try. And you know what, leave us a sub, leave us a like, leave us a comment, let us know what you think. And please do recommend us to your friends and join us again on another episode soon.